mid-20th century anesthesia paved the way for the development of cyclic inflation to ventilate surgical patients. This cyclic inflation quickly evolved into mechanical ventilation during the 1950s polio epidemic. Ventilatory support for patients with pulmonary failure soon became a reality. Although modern mechanical ventilators are sophisticated computerized devices, issues remain about side effects and complications. All modes of positive pressure ventilation increase lung volume. However, when there is a decrease in lung thorax compliance, this pressure increase can result in high airway pressure. The disadvantages of PPV include cardiac output impediment, ventilator-induced lung injury, risks to the lung, including barotrauma, and enhanced VQ mismatching. In the past, the focus of ventilatory management was on conforming the patient to the ventilator. A new direction in ventilatory management adjusts the ventilator to the patient. One way to do that is with airway pressure release ventilation. Now here's Dr. Nader Habashi, a pulmonary critical care specialist at the University of Maryland Shock Trauma Center on mechanical ventilation. The past two decades have provided expanded knowledge in the pathophysiology of acute lung injury and acute respiratory distress syndrome. Diffuse lung involvement led to the need for mechanical ventilatory support. The prevailing philosophy of this support from 1970 to 1990 was high tidal volume and low PEEP. Resulting high pressures were accepted as the cost of mechanical ventilation. Current strategies in ventilation center on evolving lung injury rather than traditional settings and goals. In addition, clinical studies indicate that mechanical ventilation may produce, sustain, or potentiate acute lung injury. This may prohibit recovery from initial lung injury, increase the opportunity for infection, and result in multi-organ dysfunction. Secondary lung injury produced by mechanical ventilation is counterproductive and has a negative impact on patient recovery. Airway pressure release ventilation is a means to augment carbon dioxide removal in a spontaneously ventilating patient on CPAP. It was designed to allow unrestricted spontaneous ventilation so that only minimal ventilatory augmentation would be used. APRV presents several advantages for the ventilatory management of ARDS. The advantages include spontaneous breathing, which in turn allows better VQ matching, more equal redistribution of tidal volume, and better compliance. Therefore, lung efficiency improves and less ventilation is needed, as well as less FiO2. Lesser airway pressure is required to improve gas exchange. These advantages can be better understood after careful examination of the pathophysiology of lung injury. CT scans performed with incremental increases in levels of positive end expiratory pressure categorize the pathoanatomy of lung injury into three compartments. Aerated lung regions demonstrate preservation of normal lung architecture. These lung regions retain normal gas tissue density on CT scan and have non-dependent distribution. Lung regions in which alveolar gas volume is replaced by exudate, typically in a dependent distribution, appear dense radiographically. Alveolar filling and abnormal lung mechanics result in underinflated lung regions and are not recruited by increasing airway pressures. Lung regions that are collapsed by interstitial expansion have alveolar gas volume loss without alveolar filling. These collapsed lung units are potentially recruitable by increasing airway pressure. Once recruited and stabilized, gas tissue density ratio increases toward normal. The pathologic findings in patients with ARDS demonstrates patchy distribution with varying degrees of edema, consolidation, and atelectasis, all in close proximity. CAT scans, mechanical, physiologic, and pathologic data supports non-uniform lung involvement in acute respiratory distress syndrome. This influences distribution of ventilation, gas exchange, lung healing and repair, and the potential for ventilator-induced lung injury. Okay, that right there. Lung injury in ARDS is characterized by diffuse capillary, endothelial, and alveolar epithelial cell damage. However, regional response to lung injury can vary. Compressible lung tissue and the effects of gravity 
the weight of the heart, chest wall compliance, abdominal organs, and the hydrostatic fluid column exaggerate the dysfunction in dependent lung regions. In early hyperdynamic ARDS, dependent lung regions receive greater perfusion. Increased blood flow raises hydrostatic pressure, favoring transcapillary exudation and pulmonary edema formation. Increased exudation generates a fluid column superimposing a hydrostatic pressure gradient along the dorsal ventral axis. The heart and mediastinal structures impose additional pressure on dependent lung regions. The weight of the blood-filled heart compresses the broad middle and dependent lung regions towards the posterior thorax and spine. This leads to additional airway closure and alveolar collapse. ARDS patients are traditionally managed in the supine position. This position maximizes the compressive effect of the heart, mediastinal structures, and chest wall, concentrating the weight of the organs posteriorly and cephalad. This encroaches on the thoracic cavity. Traditionally, spontaneous breathing in these patients is discouraged. Controlled ventilation makes heavy sedation necessary, eliminating patient interaction with the ventilator and suppressing spontaneous breathing. Neuromuscular blockade is often used in these patients. These forces result in a disproportionate underventilation of dependent lung regions. Regional effects of lung injury result in greater disparity between dependent and non-dependent lung regions. Heterogeneity of lung units in ARDS creates a complex pressure volume relationship. Volume delivered with mechanical ventilation interacts with regional micromechanics. The initial injury establishes abnormal lung mechanics. However, the ventilator mode has an impact on the distribution of regional ventilation within the lung. Regional transpulmonary pressure gradients exist throughout the normal lung and are exaggerated in ARDS. Forces directed dorsally and cephalad increase pleural pressure in the dependent lung regions. Ventilation decreases as pleural pressure surrounding these regions lowers the transalveolar pressure differential. Although peak airway pressures are monitored clinically, transalveolar pressure more accurately reflects regional pressure volume distribution within the lung. Regional differences in intrapulmonary compliance and resistance induce non-uniform volume distribution. Lung units begin inflation from different end expiratory lung volumes. Disproportionate pressure and volume changes develop throughout the lung. This malventilation produces regional overdistension and underventilation simultaneously. This non-uniform ventilation limits gas exchange to a fraction of the total lung surface area.